Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Ahmed El Fakharani. I am a lead DevOps engineer. In this video, we will explore the SSH tunnels we can establish and their use cases. The labs we are doing will be performed on AWS, but they can be applied equally to any infrastructure, whether on-prem or on another cloud provider. If you are viewing this, I presume that you already know what SSH is, but for the sake of completeness, let's quickly define it. SSH or Secure Shell is a cryptographic network protocol that allows secure communication between two systems over an unsecured network. It is commonly used for remote server management, secure file transfers, and executing remote commands. SSH provides strong password authentication, public key authentication, and encrypted data communication, ensuring integrity and confidentiality. Before starting our lab, let's view our infrastructure. So we have two instances hosted on AWS, one is publicly accessible over the public internet and the other is private. The public instance is also called the bastion server since we can use it as a jump host to connect to the private one. We also have a third virtual machine running inside our local lab and it is not on AWS. It is not accessible from the public internet or the bastion server. Let's begin with our first tunnel. It's called local. With that tunnel, you can establish a connection to a service that is running inside your private instance or private host, and it is not publicly accessible to the internet. This service could be anything, a database, a cache server, a web server, a mail server, etc. So let's start our lab by logging into our first private instance using our bastion host. And let's install and start the Apache web server. Notice that this machine is running in an isolated network. If we want to access the web server from our local machine, then we need to open a local SSH tunnel as follows. SSH hyphen N capital so that we don't open a shell to the remote host. Instead, we create a tunnel. Then hyphen L capital again to indicate that we want to establish a local tunnel. Then we specify the port we intend to use to access the service. We will use port 8080. After that, we have a column, then the private IP address of the target machine, followed by a second column, followed by the port where Apache is listening on on the target host, which is 80. Finally, we specify the connection to the bastion host ec2-user at the public address of the bastion machine. What this command does is that it creates a secure connection between our local machine and the private one through a third machine that is accessible to both. The bastion server has two interfaces. One, the public, where we connect to from our local laptop over the internet, and the private one, where it can connect to the web machine inside the AWS CPC or the internal network. Now, to verify that the tunnel has indeed been connected, we can open the browser and navigate to localhost-8080. As you can see, we have the Apache web server welcome page displayed. Notice that the tunnel runs through the bastion host from our laptop to the private server. The connection is encrypted since it is wrapped inside SSH. Although we are not using HTTPS, we are still using a secure connection. So this is another benefit of using local SSH tunnels, which is that we not only have access to a service that runs inside a private network over the public internet, but also we do this over a secure and encrypted connection so that no data can be leaked out throughout the connection. That is mainly because SSH tunnels work on layer four of the OSI model. This means that we can use any TCP protocol and SSH's encrypted connection will ensure that this protocol is encrypted. So for example, we could connect to a MySQL database, an FTP server, an SMTP server, and so on. And although those connections are not encrypted by the protocol itself, they are encrypted by SSH through the tunnel. Now let's move to our uh, second type of SSH tunnel, which is called the reverse tunnel. The reverse tunnel is also referred to as the poor man's VPN solution. We will know why in a few seconds. While the local tunnel was initiated from the local machine to the remote private one, the reverse tunnel works the other way around. 
As the name suggests, it is initiated from the remote machine to the local one. A typical use case is when a machine lives in a private network and it is not accessible even from the bastion host. Our lab has a virtual machine that lives in the home network and not on AWS. This is my current home network inside my Wi-Fi network. It is accessible only from my local laptop since, as I said, it's inside my home network, but it is not accessible from the public internet and consequently not from the bastion host. So what if I'm not at home and I want to access this virtual machine? I can do that through the reverse SSH tunnel as follows. First, we log into the private virtual machine we want to access from outside. Then, from within this machine, we start our tunnel as follows. SSH-I, then we specify the location of the private key we use to connect to our Bastion server, hyphen N capital again to avoid open a shell to the Bastion server, and to keep the connection open without actually logging in to the server, then hyphen R capital to indicate that we are establishing a reverse tunnel, then 2222. Two, two, two. This is a random port that I have chosen, and this is what I am intending to use on the Bastion server when I want to connect to my local virtual machine. We're gonna see how we can use this in a few moments. Then we have a column local host, since we want to be able to use the loopback interface on the Bastion server to enter the tunnel. This is actually a security precaution. We could have equally provided 0 .0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0.0, but this means that we could access the Bastion server from outside and then enter the tunnel to our virtual machine. And we don't wanna do this. We want anyone who wants to access our virtual machine, which lives in our home network, to do that only when they access the Bastion server and use the local host or the loopback interface inside the Bastion host to connect to the virtual machine through the tunnel. Then we have colon 22, which is the target port on the private host, the target port on my local virtual machine. Finally, the address and the username of the bathroom machine, which will act as our tunnel. Now we have the reverse tunnel open. Assuming that we are outside home and we want to access our virtual machine, we can log into our virtual machine by establishing an SSH connection to localhost over port 2222. We will supply the private virtual machine credentials as if the connection to it is coming from the local home network, as if I'm connecting to it from my local laptop and not from AWS on the outside internet. And here we are. Notice that the security of this solution is that the tunnel was initiated from the private VM and not from outside. So when external access is no longer needed, we can just shut it down from our private host. Thus, we control who can access and when. Our final tunnel type is called the dynamic tunnel. It is also referred to as SOX proxy. We can use this tunnel to access the Bastion server as our SOX proxy or our proxy host and then use it to access the public internet or we can use it to access any service that this Bastion host has access to. The most common use case of this type of tunneling is using the SSH host as a SOX proxy for our HTTP traffic. There are many use cases where this solution may be beneficial. Perhaps the most common one is bypassing regional traffic restrictions. For example, let's say we have an API or a web application that requires users to connect to it from specific region or country. Using a remote SSH server located in this area or region, it will give you access to this service since it only sees the public address of the host and not your client. This also gives you the benefit of anonymizing your IP address, which could be needed in some situations. And as always, with SSH tunnels, the connection is encrypted from your machine all the way to the remote host. But notice that the connection is encrypted from your local laptop all the way to the SOX proxy. But any connection that runs after that depends on the protocol itself. So if you're using HTTPS, then the connection from the SOX proxy to the web server will be over HTTPS. However, if you're using HTTP, which is not encrypted, then the connection, once it leaves the SOX proxy to the web server, it will be in an unencrypted form and it could be subject to sniffing attacks. So make sure when you use a SOX proxy that you also use a protocol that is secure enough so for example, if you are using the HTTP protocol, make sure you're using HTTPS. If you are using other protocols and you're using the dynamic proxy to access the remote services over those protocols, make sure that they are also secured. Now let's see how we can use the dynamic SSH tunnel and set it up as a SOX proxy. So we run SSH and we specify the location of our private key, hyphen N again, capital to avoid opening a shell in the remote host, hyphen D to indicate that we intend to open a 
dynamic tunnel, ADAD is the port that we are willing to use as our proxy. Then we specify the username and address of the Bastion host. We will keep the connection open on this window and we open our browser. We are using Firefox for this lab, but the same concept applies to any modern browser. Opening the browser, we open the settings tab and search for the network port. Then we configure the proxy server that this browser will use for accessing the public internet by specifying localhost and port 8080 and also specifying that this proxy type is of type SOX. Now we can test our work by opening a website that reveals the location of the client IP address, for example, iplocation.net or any similar website. As you can see, we are being located in Dublin, Ireland. Since we are using the EU West One region, the internet service provider is identified as AWS. In fact, this is one of the ways web applications can know or detect that you are using a proxy to access their services and they could block your access for that. But this largely depends on how tight or light the security policies are configured. So in this video, we demonstrated the three types of SSH tunnels that we have and their possible use cases. If you enjoyed this video, you may want to check out my SSH course where I explain this topic in more detail and also cover loads of other SSH tips and tricks. I will be posting the course link in the description with a coupon that grants you the maximum possible discount exclusively for this channel. My name is Ahmed Al-Fakharani. I hope you learned something new today. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified the moment any new content is posted. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.